The problem that happens here is that then the wicked one comes. So it's not just because you're hurting and understand it, the wicked one's going to come. It has to do with what do you do once you realize you don't understand it. Are you seeking to find yourself a teacher? The five-fold ministry, guys, that Paul says you will need until the time of the body coming into the fullness of the completeness of Yeshua himself. The unity. We're not there. You still need these guys. This is where I say, you know, peace in a world not his is the name of the teaching. Well, you're not going to have peace in this world that's not his if you're going to focus on things the way the world that's not his focuses. They focus on this riches that is actually a deception. And you allow yourself to be susceptible to that deceit, into that deception. You fall into that trap. And so you also worry. And the worry of this age, what's the worry of this age? All the stuff going on in the world that everybody else is worried about. You want people to talk to you about your belief? How about showing that you're not worried when everybody else is and them going to you? Why aren't you worried? And you say, because I have the peace that was given to me by Messiah. What is that? Something he just gave it to you? No. He says, I do not give it to you as the world would give. How would the world give it to you? It'd be like if I said, I'm going to hand you this Bible. Say, I'm going to give you a Bible. And I go and I hand it to you. That's how the world would do it. They would literally physically hand it to you. He says, I don't give you peace that way. I'm going to have you go through a life where you learn to trust me. You learn to have my mind. You learn to see that the fruit of obedience and covenanting brings peace. You know, the, the, the name it, claim it guys want you to think that that's stuff. You're going to do these things and he's going to give you 100-fold, 60-fold, and 30-fold money, abundance, wealth. What if he was talking about peace? Because, you know, if you go back to chapter 6, he's talking about treasures in heaven, not treasures down here. So why if all of a sudden you think he's changing his mind about what he's talking about? That he's now talking about treasures down here? He says, those people indeed bear fruit, and they yield some 100, some 60, some 30. Now, what fruit are we talking about here? Well, the churches want to tell you it has to do with wealth. I think it has to do with love, joy, peace, patience. You're going to, bear, you're going to yield the fruit. The nine aspects of the Ruach. Maybe that's what it's talking about here. How about if that was increased 100-fold or 60-fold or 30-fold in your life? Is, is all kinds of full of pressures and persecution. People will persecute and pressure you about anything. It doesn't even just have to be about religion. If you try to do anything that steps out away from the crowd, if the crowd is financially poor and you're trying to get more wealth, they will pick on you. If you're at your job and you try to elevate up the chain and other people are not willing to do that or know they'll never get there, they will pick on you. Anything that you do to try to elevate yourself in any way, you start doing life coaching and try to improve your life, in any way, people will persecute and attack you. The crowd doesn't like when you step out from them. Think of it from like back in the days when, when remember when Teflon came out? We, you know, it was all big deal. How nothing stuck to Teflon. And then you'd have politicians that they said they were like Teflon because these charges would go and nothing would stick. Or different people like, you know, we had uh, that one um, uh, mobster guy. They called him the Teflon Don because they had all these charges. Nothing to stick to him. They finally got him, but okay. But the idea that nothing would stick, that's what you need to be. If you're not of the world, it's like having a Teflon shield. It's called Torah. Nothing that the world throws at you will stick. You don't get any world on you. You were brought into this world to accomplish certain things. I was, you were, all of us. You were brought into the world to accomplish things. Can you confidently feel at any moment, in case you don't know when your life's going to be over, to be able to say, I have accomplished what you gave me to do? So what has he given all of us to do? All of us have the same responsibility, and then we all have certain things that others don't have. We have our own individual things, but we all have one thing in common. Our responsibility is to shema the word and bear the fruit. Life is not really complicated. Our problem is that we don't get immediate results. We don't get the fruit we're looking for, that result we're looking for immediately. But our life is very simple, and the Torah is very simple. He says, my covenant with you doesn't require 400 pages, like sometimes a law being passed, a bill in Congress. It's, it's very simple. If you will obey my voice. Now, bear in mind that the obeying the voice implies 
a huge amount of trust. It's that emunah that's required. This worry thing needs to go. It's in incredibly um, counterproductive to everything you're trying to do. It is the, it is the adversary. So, you, know, you were raised to fear the devil. You were raised to be afraid of this red, horn-tailed, whatever, whatever the Christian church has all got you afraid of. You want to be afraid of something? Be afraid of worry. Worry is going to destroy and undermine everything. It is an adversary. Okay, we call, we call Hasatan the adversary. Worry is the adversary to what you're doing.